While there are a number of ways that I could graph this linear function, I'm going to do it by first putting it into slope intercept form, which means I have to solve for my y and arrange it as a coefficient times x plus b. And that form tells me something about what the graph's going to look like. Working to get the 3y by itself, I'm going to subtract 5x from both sides, which results in 3y equals negative 5x plus 6. Note that I put the negative 5x first because that's how it appears in the generalized slope intercept form. And because this is negative and this is positive by default, it's like I'm adding 6 at the end. As my next algebraic step, I'm going to divide everything by 3 to get the y by itself. 3 divided by 3 is simply 1y. And remember, when I divide this by 3, I need to divide each term on the other side by 3 as well. And that leaves me with y equals negative 5 thirds x plus 2. So now I can read that my slope is what's in the m position, the negative 5 thirds, and the y-intercept is in the b position, which in this case is going to be 2. Starting with the fact that my y-intercept is 2, that means my graph crosses the y-axis at precisely the point 2. So I'm going to first put my first point on the graph here where uh, x is 0 and y is equal to 2. From there, I'm going to follow my slope. Remember, slope is rise over run. So in this case, I have a rise of negative 5 and a run of 3, which means I go down 5 and over 3 to get to my next point on the graph. So starting with the point I already have, I'm going to go down 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and over 1, 2, 3, and there I'll put my next point. I can't go down anymore in this direction, and well, I can't, but I can't remain on the graph at my next integer point. So let me try going the opposite way. So I'm going to reverse. Instead of going down 5, I'm going to go up 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and back 1, 2. Now, finally, I'm just going to connect those points 3, where I can put a point here. And finally, I'm going to as straight as I can draw a line through all of my points. And this line is going to represent the complete solution set to our equation. In other words, any point which appears on the line, the ordered pair x and y, are going to be a solution to my original equation here. The x values and y values that correspond to the ordered pairs that I have over here should make for a true answer to this equation here. That's essentially what the graph represents. I put it in slope-intercept form, and then I used, starting with my y-intercept, I used my slope to find points on the line. Hopefully that helped you. Thank you.